Welcome to Kalaba Kwaba on Muntu Nabantu Digital Narrowcast. The thoughts, views, opinions expressed by the hosts of this narrowcast are for educational purposes only and may at times become entertaining or nonetheless serious in nature due to the topics we select and cover. We are not exposing, revealing, indicting, or telling you anything other than what's already reported by the big budget mainstream media. We look to shine the light of Baba Mungu by exposing what is done in darkness to light. Enjoy the narrow cast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Klaba Kwaba. This is your brother Silverback Congo and our sister. Jade Phoenix Rising. Hello, Jade. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Excellent. I'm doing wonderful. I'm so glad winter is over and we're transitioning to a new season. Looking forward to enjoying the warmer months of mm. the year. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's always exciting to, to, uh, to feel the sun again. <laughs> yes. You know, yes, we are the, yeah. we are the children of this, of the sun, children of the light, mm -hmm. you know, the sun, yeah. the sun does something to us. It makes mm -hmm. us, uh, shine brightly. It give us strength. It balances our immune system. We are in union with the sun, the earth, the moon. However, there are a people, or should I say, uh, there are. <laughs> <laughs> You're always going deep. <laughs> The reason why, because uh, we don't have to do the intro today. We don't have to do a quote of the day because it's the same quote from last time. So that's right. That's I, right. I took up, uh, you know, but yeah, let, let me not hold hold up the stage too long. <laughs> Introduce, okay. right. Introducing Jade Phoenix Rising. Yeah, so we're really excited to do part two of this narrow cast because it's it's um this topic is of course everything that we um share here is somewhat serious in nature but when it comes to our children mm -hmm. it's no matter how you try to script an agenda or a speech or points when it hits home it hits home in ways that it it, it the the school systems strike every single nerve in your body and you, no matter how much you prepare your kids for it, it never ceases to shock you how they fall short in terms of learning how to meet the needs of a child, um, being able to communicate um, properly to the parents, just being respectful, respectful for a family's, um, you know, their their space. Because I think depending on what institution you put your child in it's no matter what they say it's a business and they have their structure and they have their ways of doing things and they expect the children and the parents who are supposed to be constituents to just fall in place this is how we do things ma'am and if you don't like it then but what happens when you put your child in a school and you're entrusting them and you're not talking about the um, the school, you know, in terms of oh, you know, it has it, it's esteemed. It's been around since the 50s or 60s, and it's a notable school. It's 
you know, we it produces lots of scholars. Okay, that looks great on paper, but what happens when the school fails the the parents and the children because the curricula seems more politically uh, minded rather than academically sound and teach what's appropriate for the child at an age level and interest level. And the so-called interests of others infiltrates and affects the curricula and it shouldn't have a place or a platform in the classroom setting, but it's somehow pushed in. I use the word pushed in. And in in the in the first narrow cast we talked about, I've shared a little bit about my experiences and why um, others, black families have elected to uh, leave traditional schools and um, look into other options like homeschooling. And so this part two segment is going to shed some light and some facts about how this is a phenomenon that's on the rise and it goes beyond just uh, touching the basis of the LGBTQ um, agenda, which is and has been our primary focus of, of complaint of how it affected, you know, I, I would say even the, distracted the children from their regular studies. Um, but, but we're gonna touch other reasons why um, parents may be leaning in that direction and um, also at the end of the narrowcast, uh, be able to provide some links, some insight on how to get started if this this is an option that you are looking forward to doing. So that's what we're going to do today in this narrowcast is just kind of slow down the information so that those who may be on the fence or might be curious or would like to um, look for some references, some ideas and insight. We would love to open up that discussion, but also welcome you into looking into those options because sometimes these options are the best options because we're, the world is in a state where, especially for our, our Black children, not always looking for their best interests and things are being taught that uh, are, do not fall in alignment with our spiritual beliefs and let alone our academic um, goals or uh, anticipation and expectation of the schools. So that's the purpose of this narrowcast and we welcome you back if you uh, joined us in the last narrowcast and if you're joining us for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome to Club Aquaba. Excellent, excellent. Uh, family, uh, please do us uh, the honor, if you may, um, go ahead uh, and subscribe to the channel. And uh, and why after you after you finish subscribing, it will be nice if you can go ahead and uh, click the like button, um, so that we can be found by the algorithm. And also, please do comment, okay? Just encourage those who are, uh, add, add to the topic, okay? I would like for you to add to the topic. If we're missing something, if we are not giving you what you are expecting, or if you get something out of the, uh, do you get any value from the narrow cast, please do comment. It actually helps, okay? And also, if you found the content valuable, share with someone else, especially this particular topic of, uh, you know, they may you may have neighbors who have children or parents that are looking to remove their children out of the school system. This particular topic would be of, of value to them. So please share the content with others. And mm -hmm. with that, go ahead, Jade. Yes, I love the word value. <laughs> Using this word, this terminology value, when you as a parent 
or a, as an adoptee or a foster parent, when you are in the situation where you are going to raise a child and you are looking at them in all their glory and their splendor and there's twinkles in their eyes and your heart is swelling with love and in your mind you're thinking, oh, my, do my daughter or my son could be a lawyer, they could be a doctor, they could be, um, you know, a scientist, they could be, you know, uh, an electrician or computer uh, technologist. You have lots of ideas of whatever they can do, sky's the limit. You value your child. Mm. And every time you hold them, talk to them, hug them, hold their hand, tuck them in in bed, you also have a small fear in your heart that perhaps they're not going to be respected or loved or appreciated when they leave your presence whether mm -hmm. it's a babysitting issue, whether it's a school issue, whether it's even just a play dates, even, because you just, sometimes children are rough, okay? But in the school system, when you drop your child off at 7, 8 o'clock in the morning and you, you kiss them goodbye, people of color wonder how the child is being talked to. They wonder if there's any fairness in the education we wonder if they're being rushed or silenced or or discouraged or maybe even challenged to, you know, in a way to submit to authority, depending on the structure of the school or the 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 even the way the teacher conducts themselves. And we love our children, we want to prepare them for the world. However, there's a lot of forces and a lot of interests and a lot of political um, distractions that that impose themselves within the school system and it it somehow the children are targeted so maybe other schools won't feel this because the kids are praised and they get everything they want they have all the resources they go on many trips and they have computers and they have tablets and they have all all they need they can order where the other kids, have, two or three kids have to share a device, they have to wait their turn and get in line and fall in line and, and it becomes militaristic. And then we wonder, what are we subjecting our children to? What is it that they're doing? What is the agenda? Do they value the kids or, or are they there to serve some other purpose? Now, if I, we live in the States, Silverback and I live in the States. And if you live in a zip code where there are low income families, you'll often hear the term, you know, kids who have school lunches that, that need the school lunches and that there's food, there, there's families that have food insecurities. These are the quotes that they like to, to throw around. But, okay, yes, there is poverty. Everyone, every country has poverty. But what does it translate to in the school system? You know, if they accept a certain number of students that have food insecurities, there's funding for that. If children have IEPs, individual educational plans, where perhaps they need services for speech therapy or occupational therapy, uh, if they need any assistance, maybe they have special needs, maybe they're autistic, maybe they have ADD, a, a high attention deficit disorder. Maybe they have and need clinical support or educational support. There's funding for that. So sometimes the flip side of schools, it's all about let's look at all the issues, pull it all together, and that's funding for us. So what happens when parents realize that this melting pot of, of, of so-called education is really driven by the funding they receive with all the issues that they have accepted? It's about the numbers. It's about getting these kids in here and getting the services and the money. But then what happens to the quality of service when you pull all these children with so-called needs together? 
are the teachers able to control the classroom? Are they able to um, to to teach fairly? Are is this really in, in terms of race? Is this really racially driven so that they can what they get out of it as opposed to what we expected academically for the kids to receive? So that is one essence of where there could be a conflict of interest. But the other issue is, what if the things that they're doing is targeting the children in a way that it, 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 it is to distract them, to confuse them, and to prevent them from excelling in the academics? It's an invisible, I use this word, I use it in the critical race theory. It's an invisible thread or an invisible weapon that we know exists. It affects us, but we can't quite put our finger on it. But then, because the kids are so busy, they, they distract them so well, all of a sudden now we have to test them to see if they can keep up. Well, according to the stats, this is where they should be. This is where they should be academically. This is what most fourth graders, fifth graders uh, you know, statistically are academically, and your child falls below average. But there are reasons why these children are falling behind, and it's not necessarily that they could not understand the material. It's just that there's so many distractions, like the agenda, the cl critical race theory type of 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 um of talk and events and lessons or the push for LGBTQ rights when the children are not really there to, to, to declare their sexuality at the age of five, but all of a sudden here we are introducing the topic in the classroom as if that was going to help them with their career when they're in their 20s. So parents have the right to question these things, but what happens if they're in the thrust of it all and they just got to go to work. Are we going to continue to go down the avenue where you're just going to go with the flow because that's free? Are you going to go for, with the flow because it's your only choice in your district or your area where you live and work? Or are you going to carefully observe what is happening and decide to be active in understanding whether this is actually destroying your child's morality, self-esteem, mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual state. When I say physical, because bullying um, happens, kids are teased in the most meanest ways, you know, and, and, you know, God forbid, molested, because it can happen too. So there are things that are happening in the schools, and homeschooling is something that is on the rise. And so Silverback and I both are homeschooled, ho homeschooling parents. We both have children. This is something that I recently started doing. He has more experience than me. But my whys kept growing. Why should I do this? Well, how would this benefit my, my child? How will this work in my family? Does, can I do this? There's a lot of questions that needs one needs to explore before they do it. But then when you look at your child and say, why not? Because if you're in a situation where the, the rhetoric, the noise is louder than your child's joy for being there, if, if, it's, if it's more distracting and more destructive to the point where it doesn't even seem like, are we here to make the school look good or are you here to make sure your child is on the path of success what does your child need to thrive and succeed is the first question you need to ask yourself are is the school meeting the standards that or the expectations you have that's one question if not why what are the things that are most important to you that may be lacking in your school. Because if you have any answers to those questions, you might find that the situation is not just in that school, but many. And it doesn't mean that this is gonna fall short for all races, 
But unfortunately, the systems, schools, employment, um, employment uh, places of employment are used to treating blacks a certain way. So when a white kid's in a, a, a private school, you're not going to hear them bark out, get in line, you know, do as you're told, you know, raise your hand before you speak, because you know their dad, the CEO of such and such, is going to be like, how dare you talk to my child that way? But we accept and tolerate this this treatment with our children, where the children are being subjected to a con or conditioned to what seems to be a militaristic or almost jail-like system where they the kids are wrong until proven innocent or the <laughs> children are speaking out of turn. Right. And the list goes on. And so today's lesson, um, or should I say lesson, <laughs> today's narrowcast is to explore what is and isn't working and why homeschooling option may be the best option for you and your family. Yeah. Folks, we're just uh, continuing from part one. Um, this next uh, narrowcast, we just want to be specific and uh, mm -hmm. we want to be able to lay out uh, uh, a plan for you. Um, well, we're just going to add, we're adding from what we did la 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 last narrowcast. Now, Jade? Mm -hmm. Yes. The question as far as a community, because, you know, we don't really have a community. They're, they're trying to, um, they're trying to whitewash the black, and I would say specifically the African-American population, because mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a voting block, all right? And um, mm -hmm. by by moving some um, there are indirectly, I would say, moving some of our people out of New York State. Mm -hmm. So that affects families, and it uh, obviously is going to affect the children. Um, mm -hmm. Do you see the correlation? You know. Yeah, I, I, I see the correlation. I think, um, you know, I just, just to share a, a quick fact. Um, there is a some research that was done in 2019 that they said statistically there was only 2.5 million families homeschooling in 2019, and post pandemic, it rose uh, to 4.5. Four to five million people uh, by 2021, and of those millions, a majority of the people pulling out were African American families. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge that that we have as a people, and then a community. When I say a community, is we're challenged financially. You know, people have mortgages, people have rent, people have multiple children, um, perhaps a single family households. So the issue is, okay, if we're living check to check and we're in arrears, because many people did fall behind in rent because of the pandemic and the shutdowns, we don't have that padding, that financial padding to say, oh yes, you know, I can stay home and, and, and homeschool because, you know, such and so it can manage the bills all by themselves. Single households will find this option very challenging. But because of how the kids are falling behind academically since COVID, because every time there is an increase of cases in the schools, the, the, the schools will close down classrooms at a time and in the past, the entire building. So academically, there's always the start, restart, I don't know where we are, but let's keep going. And then the false expectation that children are going to be able to keep up with state tests in the middle of a pandemic, which is absolutely ridiculous. And the black families are saying, I, I know my child is falling behind academically. We try really hard at home 
and we're still not able, to, we're not satisfied with the quality of education, but we also don't have that luxury of working, um, doing homeschooling. So the question is, okay, family, this is where we look at a problem and now we have to stop looking at this as a case where you're going to solve this alone. Now we have to remember our family has to learn to help one another. We have to start talking about the needs of the family as a community. And traditionally speaking, a silverback, I know in Ghana, you know, families, elders are known to share stories with their children. So the concept of, of teaching and sharing stories is a familiar one when families are sharing their, their um, sorry, excuse me, I have a phone ringing. No problem. Um, where they're, they're talking and sharing stories with the children, where we pass down oral traditions, where we're comfortable with talking to our children about different topics. So here in America, for some reason, we've transferred that responsibility almost 100% entrusting our kids in the system, hoping that they will just figure it out and get their kids on par so that they can be on track academically for that um, unknown career. So when this system has failed, what can we do about it? So now as a family, you have to look at your family circle and figure it out. Now, in my situation, this was challenging, not just financially, but also too, some people, their family's not living in the same country. I have family in England, I have family in Africa, I have family in the Caribbean, family in Canada, but my local family is nowhere near me. So how do I get support? So this is where we have to be creative and say, okay, when we say community, homeschoolers learn, people who, who've done this for years, create what we call um, pods. And pods are clusters of families that decide to work together like a school and they meet up at the libraries, they meet up in the playgrounds, they meet up, they have picnics, they go on trips. They work together like a school. The parents help each other by sharing resources, materials, they download um, printables, they go to websites, they figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a support system. So we, even in our struggles, need to learn to, now we have to create our own system. Mm -hmm. Because the system that exists may be failing you so greatly that it is going to take some thought, it's going to take some footwork, some effort, it's gonna take some sacrifice and it's gonna take some humility because our traditional values and thinking is, you know, my child and my son attended Harvard and Yale and Columbia and Pace and, you know, these 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 colleges and the, the same thing goes for the elementary schools where we like to parade and throw out these names, what they call name droppers and and then we get all puffed up by promoting the name of the school. But we need to remember the school is just a building. Your yeah. child is an individual. And if your child is suffering emotionally, physically, spiritually, or you know, maybe they are just confused because the pandemic has caused some um, mental stress. Some children have PTSD right now where there, there may be school shootings. Maybe there's, um, you know, cases of bullying or just COVID. People have died in their families. Homeschooling is something that feels safe, but it's uncharted territory for people who are used to the traditional educational system where we just pick the great school, the one with a great name, the one with the, you know, it, it seems like you can boast about everything, including the, the um, chess classes or the fencing or 
or you know anything that's in the arts or arts related that that the children will feel challenged in doing mm -hmm. but those days are, are are exist for certain families now and kids who have been directly impacted especially those of lower incomes the weight is too heavy to just place on the child and say get a good grade when there's so much interruptions and there's so much uh, uncertainty and there's also the put what i call the push in the political push ins of of things that are that shouldn't be in the curricula that now all of a sudden they have to do because the school has to follow guidelines according to such and so in their state and what happens to the 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 basics of their academics what happens to the child's needs and well-being what happens to your personal moral beliefs when all of that is discarded out the window and uncertain because the schools are just in the flight or, or, or fight mode where they're just winging it, what appears, appears to be winging it because they don't know how to navigate with all the issues that it has. So in, in my case, I said, you know what? Even the schools can't correct themselves right now, but what I can do for my child is do something at her own pace that meets her health needs, her emotional health needs. It doesn't, I can't cover everything. Like, of, of course, she's, you know, just one child. It's not like I have a classroom of kids. But I have to now expand, expand my understanding of education and understand, no, you know what? Education is an ongoing process. Even as an adult, we're still learning. It doesn't stop because, you know, the school building is closed or you don't go to a particular school to continue the education. The, the, the process of learning something can happen in the playground. It can happen in a museum. It can happen at the grocery store. It could happen while you even do something as simple as, you know, the old school way of counting pennies. M math can be introduced at home with something as simple as that so we tend to overthink things and say it's impossible but then if you look at life and keep things practical and simple homeschooling is doable but we just got to learn to shift our thinking and see how we can make it work with within our family structure and or um, what, what what I would consider to be extended family communities because in my case, my closest relatives are not in the state. So what does that mean? I'm going to connect with friends who are also homeschooling. Right. My, my children are going to have play dates. We have to learn to build those pods. Right. So you, you mentioned shift. So there's a yes. seismic shift when it comes down to education in the United States. As, yes. the, as the numbers indicate... Um, however, do you think there is, uh, apart from what we've actually, we've actually read, uh, based on the article, do you think mm -hmm. people, uh, 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 families are, are prepared to, to take on education? Because see the education that we got, which was monetized. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were using our, our children to uh to position the tax code right because your, your school zones were utilized for tax purposes this is how they would mm -hmm. this is how they knew uh statistically the types of kids or the educations that they were getting and and the things that they were actually putting the curriculums that they were putting in place now that our kids are away from this system here, what can we do uh, better as far as education is concerned? Because, you know, kids really uh, create um, uh, uh, a demographic where, um, uh, you understand, right? Because if we don't, yes. if, if our kids are not, if the things that we are, if we're not providing certain knowledge, right? 
because because you have to prepare mm-hmm. our kids and if we don't prepare if we don't have a system okay so put it this way i guess what i'm trying to say is as we are getting our kids out of the schools and into our mm-hmm. homes and we do homeschooling there should be a, also a, a a mindset of people who should be preparing uh, jobs, right? Because we're talking about systems, right? Jobs Mm -hmm. that would employ our own kids, Mm -hmm. right? Because because we we can't, mm -hmm. because we can't take on, let me just finish one second. We can't take on, right? We can't take on the responsibility of teaching and then teach our kids their identity, uh, uh, their history, right? We have to somehow start to develop over here the systems where once we finish with them, they are educated, then they have to take on, because the, 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 the motto of the past was, you go, you get, you get a diploma or a degree, mm-hmm. and then you go to work in their plantation, right? So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you think that we need to do best? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, I I actually heard you say something that I disagree with. We can teach them their identity. We can teach them their Mm -hmm. Black history. We can. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, that's part of the challenges that, that the schools face right now because they want to avoid talking about race and black history and they are not doing a great job they never did a great job in teaching um uh, people of color their history because they don't want to admit that it's full of murder and deceit and um racism Mm -hmm. so the best place to learn your identity should start with the family because once you know who you are and you're and the child the child is confident of who they are as a person, then no one can should be able to tell them different. Mm. Because the in it's in the school systems where kids are put in the back of the class. Mm. It's in the school systems where they're they're told they're a minority hospitals. You know, you you child, you know, put write down your name and and um and after that is what is your race? What is your nationality? Why should that matter when you're taking a math test? Who is collecting this information and why? What are you using my information for if the goal is just to help me to succeed? Why? And this goes back to the Willie Lynch letter of how they gathered this information, the statistics, and then they are comparing, taking this unknown information and seeing, oh, they're catching up. We have to do something about it. This is this is that conspiracy theory that this is set up so that they can see where the kids are excelling so they can thwart their success. Mm. Because not everyone, they don't want all of us to be successful. Maybe a few black kids, not mm-hmm. the entire black class. Mm-hmm. So some schools don't get the same amount of funding as other schools. Some teachers don't put in the effort as they should or could. Like, why would you even get a degree, a master's degree in education, if you don't value the children? There's absolutely no reason why someone should enter a classroom and then want their children to fail. Right. That is just so sinister unless they have a plan to just be, you know, what you call it, biased. You're going to praise only the kids you like. And, you know, I'm sorry for the rest. Right, and Jade. That, that, that is horrible. Jade, Jade I was, um, okay. I think, I, I don't think I was actually clear in my uh, questioning. What I was saying is this. Now that we are actually creating a system where the kids are getting homeschooling, Okay, mm-hmm. they, they're getting homeschooling and you're teaching the kids their identity, 
right? Because what I'm saying, what what I'm, I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that there's going to be a pushback eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's going to be a pushback with the enemy. Okay. So, okay. So you guys are taking your kids out of the schools and you're teaching their identity, right? And um, um, you're teaching them, you know, overall, you know, reading, arithmetic, uh, mathematics, um, you know, sociology, you, you're teaching them everything, mm -hmm. you know, in addition mm -hmm. to, to them, their identity, their history, the African history, okay? Before and prior, uh, prior to mm -hmm. slave trade, uh, as well as doing doing slavery, because everything you know mm -hmm. has to has to make sense. So mm -hmm. so once they have this education knowledge, because again, I'm going to tell you again the process the 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 way they have the system set up is you learn about their European knowledge, their European history with uh com uh combined with the you know with the um you know the sciences and you know uh, um, and then once they graduate you go to college and after college you eventually go to their plantation right mm -hmm. so yeah from from elementary school on to college right they they go, there's going to be a pushback whereas they may have to change the qualification to get into a co into their colleges. Mm -hmm. So, so well, what that's if they want. That's if they want to go that route. Exactly. Because if we think, if we think about this, it, even as as Jay, as Jay, old. Jay, Jay, let, let, let me let me finish. Let me finish. Oh sure sure. There's sure. there's reason why I'm asking. I'm asking this because I want you, I want to see if you can, if you get it and and family. I want you, I want to also. If you get what I'm saying, please write in the comment section. Okay. There's going to be a pushback. When I say pushback, there's, there's going to be resistance in when our children, the, the, these new kids that we're taking out of their schools, because we're taking out of their schools, right? We're taking the money out of their pocket. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then putting it back in our pocket because they were mm -hmm. using our children for uh, for monetary to you know they were monetizing our, our children mm -hmm. for you know for monetary gain gains so now that we've actually removed our kids because there was a tremendous amount of kids that came out of the, out of their schools so once we educate our children then what do we then do we then again bring them back to their schools after we after elementary no um as a matter of fact if we look at how foreigners when they come to america it's amazing how fast they succeed because they find ways to create a system for themselves mm. be within our system these are the cab drivers Mm -hmm. These are the nail salon artists. These are the hair braiders. These are the people who open um, little um, cafes. Mm -hmm. They create their opportunities as opposed to hoping someone would hire them right. as an employee. Mm -hmm. So we are products of a system and a structure where we're used to going through all the hoops and hurdles, get the piece of paper, and then land in the land of uncertainty where we're just hoping, you know, look, I have the piece of paper. It says I have an A. It says I completed the degree and I am a product of such and such college or high school. And please hire me, blink, blink. And, but you are one of millions of children or young adults that have the same piece of paper, different college, different state all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed hoping to be hired now this is something that struck me as an aha moment okay nyu every year has in every department they have the school of law they have the school of education they have the arts and they produce crank out it's almost like a chicken factory when they have their graduates it could be an uptick of maybe 5,000 at, at the minimum 
maybe 1,500 te teachers a year. Uh, do we have that many vacancies a year within that state? 5,000 a year for within your state of for the positions that they just graduated in. Do we have 5,000 vacancies for that industry? For what they... So what... Okay, so you, 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 you're saying do... You're saying the NYU cranks out... You give an example of teachers, right? Teachers that are graduated yes, from, from NYU. Yes, that's one school. One school with right. about 5,000, maybe 1,500 at the least. Right. Graduates per type of degree. Mm -hmm. But the question is, mm -hmm. are there vacancies for these students? So every year, that's just one of many colleges. So if we think of supply and demand, sometimes there is way more graduates than there are positions within the state. So people can be unemployed for a long time, and then they have to accept something similar to what they graduated in. But then when you're a person of color, you fall, you can fall in the lower end of the totem pole in terms of the school district that you would like to work in, perhaps the pay scale. You have the same degree as, as, as Melissa Smith and John Doe, but because you might be a person of color, there's, there could be some discrepancies in terms of the pay scale. We have to fight for rights. That's a whole nother story. But what I'm trying to say is when you have your children and they need to get their positioning in, they need to approach life as I am a doer. I am not waiting to be told what to do because that's what the system creates. People who are subservient where they are told what to do. I'm a leader. I am proactive in my education. I can explore and no one will slow me down to be compared to the pace of another. So as a parent with a child that is a learner, you can actually fast forward your child's experiences, work experiences before college. So right. how do you do that? You can start your own baking business from home. The child is learning to be an entrepreneur before college age. You can start saving money so that your child, let's for example, let's say your child wants to be a beautician. You can start saving for them to open their own shop as opposed to working in a shop. Mm -hmm. So your perspective of creating and opening the door of opportunity is not to train your child to be an employee mm -hmm. like the school systems. Because that's what they're doing. They're training our children to be employees. But if you keep the perspective of creating your pay be a uh, uh what is it a pacemaker a trend okay what's the word be a trend trendsetter, trendsetter. Pacemaker, basically pave the way yeah pave the way trendsetter is good Trend, you, you're right yes. yeah be a mm -hmm. trendsetter mm -hmm. you know be a leader not a follower mm -hmm. but you have to lead by example and show them way show them the way you're the one holding the torch and you have to show them the way because we, as college educated adults, have come to realize, especially in this country, unfortunately, having that piece of paper, you can be working side by side with a high school student and both of you have the same pay. So, because they love to give minimum wage mm -hmm. to people of color. That's right. That's the and so you're waving this piece of paper like, look at me, I'm a college you know, graduate only to find high school students getting paid the same amount. That's right. So for, for our children to succeed, you have to eliminate the employee mindset and say, listen, you can be an inventor. You can be a, a you can go do clinical science. You can apply for grants and do independent research working in your house. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be an employee. 
you can you can get the grants and work from home. You can actually write your own grant. Mm -hmm. But it's going to require us as adults to to utilize and explore industries and blow open the roofs and cast aside excuses so that we can help our this is why we have the par the narcast saying unschool our kids. Mm -hmm. We have to unschool them because the they're they're giving our children such a narrow minded view of the world. Can you ask your fifth grader or your fourth grader today, right now, if you go to a traditional school, name all the planets in the solar system, the ones closest to our sun, not beyond Pluto. Can they name them? Oh, okay. Um, can they at least name the, the layers within our earth, you know, the crust, the mantle, the core? Can they at least name that? Can they explain those things? No. If the answer is no, is because the schools are, are, are have narrowed the children's understanding. They don't even teach history. They don't even show, they don't even teach them about geography in some schools. So the kids, the only understanding they know is maybe the state, the neighboring state, maybe where they go on vacation, maybe um, China because they talk about COVID a lot, maybe the Ukraine because of the war. But do they really understand how big and vast and wonderful our world is? Do we understand different forms of government? Or are we waiting until college to understand that the world is so big? So with you starting at home, homeschooling, your child is going to flourish even if you're not a scholarly adult, even if you have just a high school degree, because now you can set the pace, you can learn from others, or just get textbooks and follow it. You can follow this in the, the textbook because they have books that have math, um, English language arts, science, even history that you can purchase online. Or there's free printables online. So there's no reason why we can't delve into different topics because, because we want it and because it's accessible. There's no one holding you back from giving that to your child. You just have to be willing to say, I'm going to stop with the traditional way of waiting right. and hoping that they're going to teach my child something new and say, you know what? Come here, let me read you a book. Come here, let's go to the library. Come here, let's start a garden. So, you know, as opposed to just, just um, understanding, okay, yeah, the, the, the life cycle of a plant is by a textbook version. Go ahead and grow something right. and, and let the child get their hands in the soil and learn hands-on experience about life. Right, right. Good, good, good. Excellent, excellent. So, family, so you get the picture. Um, just so, just to, uh, to reaffirm what uh, my sister has said, in the process of you educating your child, you have to also think about the entrepreneur side of things, meaning whatever the child learns, they then have to also learn how to apply it in in the real world. Okay? Yeah. Uh, creating, by creating a system as a business that will not only help them, but help brothers and sisters, people that look like them, okay? People mm -hmm. who are, are, uh, are moving forward um, by identity, based on their history, a common goal, okay? To, um, and, and this particular, which is perfect because, you know, like she said, we, we don't have to wait. We don't have to, you can start training your children about you know, you obviously the education is the engine to uh, entrepreneurship, right? So education is never going to end. It's just that you're slowing them down when they're when they're kids to have a focus, to learn, to have a focus, right? Not to go to the plantation, rather to be self-employed, 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. So, to be self-employed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what we want. Um, so basically, you have to, you have to have two minds, family. Yes, one mm-hmm. mind is to uh, uh, to educate and to develop your child to co- to become it to the so that they can become a self-sufficient adult, right? Mm-hmm. And the, and the other the other and the other mind is to while you're teaching the child, you now then have to sh- you have to show them how to apply the knowledge that mm-hmm. they are attaining. All right, yes. so. And no one knows your child more than you. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest pitfalls in in this country is student debt because we followed the system and we've pushed the children through the loops all the way to college. And then when they get asked that question, what do you want to be when you grow up? That ongoing question, no one ever really... The, the children haven't had time to explore those options when they're too busy trying to cram tests. Or they're, they're so busy being inundated with information and testing that they never had time to reflect on what their own strengths and weaknesses were outside of what the school said that they think they're good at. Yeah. Based on our stats, your child is falling behind in math but is better at art. Or he's better at, you know, physical education. But but does that really give you a p- clear picture of what your child wants to be? And there's no time to reflect because the kids are stressed out. And then what happens when they sign the contract of, you know, applying for a college loan or college, you know, applying for a college, a four-year college degree? And then they change their mind. It's the most expensive mistake that you can make to enter college and not be clear on what you really want to do. And yeah. so you save millions, thousands of dollars on that, um, making mistakes like that by exploring through homeschooling different things. So the child is like, oh, mommy, I really love working with animals. I want to be a veterinarian when I grow up. So you take, you have some plants. I mean, some animals. I said plants. You have some animals. And the children are are entrusted with the care of animals. Then that becomes a lesson. That you go to the zoo. That becomes a lesson. You take out books. They explore, explore, explore until their heart's content. And then you know what? At some point, they say, you know what? I really love this. If not, it's just a hobby. But there's nothing lost because they've gained wisdom. But you didn't financially put yourself thousands of dollars in the hole like you would in college you know it is if you have kitty litter and and dog food and veterinarian fees in that way but but in terms of the enrichment and the educational experience they've come out so much more smarter and much more connected to nature and much more closer to a career mindedness that they would not have had if they just focused on just filling in the blanks and, and, you know, matching this and that and multiple choice questions. Like the children are not at a critical thinking level when they're just being told to just check boxes and bubble in circles. There's no critical thinking. It's just all trivia. Well, you know, the, 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 here's another thing that you have to consider, Jade, that the, you know that question where they say, what, where, what are you going to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. That's a trick question, by the way, right? Because mm-hmm. if, your child, if you're teaching your child to become, uh, like you say, a, vet, a, vet, uh, what, a vet, uh, veterinarian, 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 right? Yeah. You, they, 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 play with, they play with the animals. They're reading books about, about the animals, right? Mm-hmm. If, if they have pets around, and they are in connection. They have. They're having. You know, the the touch and feel education, where they can hear the dog. They can play with the dog, and then they read about it. Right. They're feeding the the two minds, the left brain and the right brain. So there is an mm-hmm. interaction. It's real time. It's it's not mm-hmm. what you're gonna be. It's what you're becoming. Right. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, yeah. The question yeah. is, how are they becoming? Right. So. 
So that question of what you're going to be, it's a suspense. And mm -hmm. how, and how, and how do you know it's a suspense is because when you go to their schools, they ask, they, 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 they stray you from the, the, uh, the curriculum that's going to get you the, they don't give you a focused curriculum. They give you electives. Yes, you right. you got to take that. You got to take yes. this, take this. They, they, they distract you with so many other stuff to confuse you, to waste time so that you can lose heart, lose focus, mm -hmm. be distracted. Right. So it's a, yes. it's a trick game because when you look at the U European nations, they don't do that to them, but mm -hmm. they allow, they allow this to take place here in America or the, the places where, they had their quote unquote they, they come in come in wealth right mm -hmm. but in europe they don't do that they, they in europe they make sure that the kids get the the uh the specific course of, of uh, uh of whatever that they, they are trying to achieve as far as their their career they focus on that mm -hmm. early on in fact they start very very young very early okay there's no distractions but over here in America, they distract because they want you to uh, to be indebted to them. Okay, mm -hmm. they, they want you to become a yeah, and to and and to take and to take courses like it's a buffet. You mm -hmm. know, just keep piling it on their plate, and we'll weigh it at the end. It's like, oh, you have a lot on your plate. The kids are inundated with work. They're swamped with essays, reports, and tests, and then they're exhausted. And then is it, are they really any um, closer to a career or just playing the, the game where their intellect is being um, trivialized, where they're just looking at saying, okay, of all the students in this school year, this is the top 10 and these are the ones that are average. Mm. So they're rating your intelligence based on their system but is it supposed to be about your intelligence or your competency in doing the work? Exactly. Homework is not necessarily going to show what you really understand. It's how you apply it. Mm -hmm. Not just, um, I, oh, I missed a box or, you know, I answered these four questions wrong. That doesn't mean you're stupid. Mm -hmm. It just means you perhaps overlooked one, two or three options or maybe was uncertain or ran out of time but that doesn't mean you don't understand you could it just could be a time factor so whatever the case may be this the, the systems pull um does some really um mental uh mental work on both the parents and the children where mm. they start feeling inadequate if they fall below so-called standards but if you're centered in focusing on the quality and understanding and retention or application of whatever they're learning, no matter what age group, then the focus is on the experience. The children have learned experience, hands-on experience when they learn about the planets and they're sculpting it with Play-Doh or they're drawing it or building it in 3D models in their computer. It's not a checkbox or a multiplication, mul multiple choice answer. It's look at how well they'll remember it because you've applied this understanding in different ways. Mm -hmm. The school system has them ranked according to, you know, 50% of the kids answered this way and answered that way. And you, you know, no, that's our, our mind that 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 is just false in terms of understanding what a child is c capable of doing so it's very important if you want to unschool your kids is to approach education that is separate from how the world is doing it because they also are stats that shows homeschoolers are actually exceeding those in traditional schools in the school system what if they should reapply and go to school that they actually are the smarter students yeah they have been known to far outpace the traditional um, students because they're they're more confident 
they um, have different critical uh, thinking skills. They're able to analyze, predict, and, um, and disseminate information. And the other kids are just looking for keywords or they're just trying to memorize because mm -hmm. they were taught to memorize certain yeah. things. This yeah. is going to be on the test tomorrow. Yeah. As opposed to let me read and understand it. So yeah. th there's a lot to be said about doing things differently. Yeah, there's a difference between uh, there's a there's a difference between memorizing and comprehension. So mm -hmm. if if you comprehend what you're being taught, even if you forget because you've you've got down the uh the 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 theory, you've got the theory down down pack, you would eventually remember, you know? It's it's math, 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 mathematics is like that. If you comprehend, you don't have to memorize. So that's the best way of learning is comprehension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's right. Yeah. And then, and of course, application. Because yeah. you know your child better. I, as a matter of fact, just today, I was talking to a parent. And one of her biggest challenges, she has been pulling her child out of school every year since she started. Mm. Starting with preschool because of bullying, because of name calling, because of the inadequate curricula, because of teachers' negligence, you know, the six feet distancing of COVID, where the children are now treated like lepers, like they can't, the, the, social, the socialization is very poor. And there's so many breakdowns within the school system, but of all of those things that are very difficult for her and her child, the biggest disappointment she has is the fact that she has a child that's curious. If you have a child that asks a lot of questions, some teachers are not patient with those kids because they, in their own way, are trying to tell them, not right now, you're asking too many questions, read this at home, or, um, you know, stop interrupting or focus. Like they, they love to use that word, focus on what we're doing right now. And so basically the child that's full of joy, enthusiasm, and wonder is now being told that they're not focused in class because they're not working at the same pace as the teacher. Mm. So if the teacher doesn't want to go in depth on a topic, but the child wants to learn more, instead of fanning into flame the child's curiosity and say, oh, you know, I don't want to use her real name. Oh, um, Precious, Precious, you seem to love the planets. <laughs> when we go to the library, I'm going to share with you some wonderful books about the planets, and you can check those out and take them home. Mm -hmm. As opposed to saying, not right now, stay focused or stop being distracted. For what? For wanting to learn more? or stop asking too many questions, or we're not up to that right now. These are quotes that come out of the teacher's mouths. So what happens when your child is curious and you're in a school that's so rigid that a child who is curious, now it's a bad thing. So the teachers fail the children when they don't recognize the child it has a thirst for wisdom and that poor, and I want to use, the, I don't like to use a word, but that unfortunate black child is now discouraged and made to look like it can't focus at a young age when all they are is full of curiosity and wonder because the world is amazing. So much to explore. Yeah. But then now they're, they're forced to, to hold their and curb their enthusiasm because the teacher is not as excited as the child is. So in homeschooling, if you recognize that the child is in plan, in, interested in the planets, now you can say, guess what? We're going to focus on this for two weeks as opposed to one day or so, one week. So, 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 so family, the other, the other thing, Jade, uh, the, for me, I'm very, very happy that a lot of our kids are coming out of that uh, slave, that slave plantation. All right. You call it. Mm -hmm. European education because the kids don't have to deal with Karens anymore. They don't have to deal mm. with, they don't need to kill the Karens and the Karens is not influencing your kids. Okay. So therefore mm -hmm. your, your children have an opportunity to 
grow and to marry women that look like their parents, like their mother. Okay, so this this next or men, gener- or men. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh, well yeah yeah. Well, I'm speaking on behalf of, of the of the you know what I mean because the of the boys, uh, yeah, the boys, the boys, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to grow up, yeah. Okay, exactly. No, no. <laughs> you know, so so we're not we're not you know we're not we're not raising kids who are going to ex- aspire to who who are not going to be attracted to European culture, mm-hmm. European ideology, okay, Europeans. Uh, fake history okay because it, it's fake now if their history was so good why are they afraid of teaching our kids their history mm. right so mm-hmm. these are the questions that you have to consider first of all the kids are coming out of the out of that scam of an education that you call education you call uh, mm-hmm. ac- academics it's not it's it's not real Okay, it's not real because it, it, it's, it's false, it's destructive, it separates people, it's divisive. There is nothing good about their education. Okay? What they have mm-hmm. created, it's a white supremacy system. All right? Mm-hmm. That's what they have created. It was never education. It's never education. Because yeah. none of, I've and, never... And- I've, 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 I'll, I'll give you the floor. I have never thought that our people were uh, def, uh, deficient in any way. Just mm-hmm. for the fact that because they've put so many hurdles before us to try to stop us, to try to stop us. But mm-hmm. like I said, you're going to see for yourself that once your children get to know who they are, they're going to make righteous de- decisions going forward. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then there are some people who are going to listen to this and say, oh, you know, I think you're kind of exaggerating this whole situation. But I think people of color, like, you know, the friend that I, I just mentioned, whose daughter I named Precious, there are some family members that are half Indian, half black, and some family members that look more Indian, Caribbean Indian mm-hmm. than others. So when they go to school, their schools, they may not be treated like a black person if they're light-skinned Indian with long flowing hair. Mm -hmm. They may not be treated as a a black, or should I say a Negro, Mm -hmm. in in their school. Because if you think about it, like just using the hospital setting, you can see that the doctors at the top are white. Mm -hmm. Then they have people from India. Then you have people from the Philippines, you know, like going down to the nurses. And then further down the ranks, you'll see the blacks, Mm -hmm. the people who are almost CNA level, attendees that do bedside work, the cleanup, right? In In the old days, they called them candy stripers, the cleaners, down to the custodians. And you'll see the racial ranking within the hospitals. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing in corporate America. If you see the black person, there'll be one or two high paid executives and the rest are secretaries, you know, ordering food for the office or picking up the packages at the front desk Mm -hmm. or maybe security or maybe the custodian themselves. The people of color are at the bottom of the food chain. Mm-hmm. The schools will do the same thing for the kids. Mm-hmm. You're just dropping off your child for an education. They're all learning the same thing, but they're not all being treated the same. Mm-hmm. Yes, they may have the same school, zip code, address. They may have the same teacher and classroom, but each child, back to how we started the narrow cast, not each child is going to be valued. They don't put in the effort with all kids because they don't value them. And to a certain degree, if we don't emphasize or support our children in their education, we lack to value them as well because you you expect too much. You expect the schools to do it all. You have to put in the effort with your child and help them with their behavior if their behavior is out of whack. Like, you know, a parent that has to be in there to, to tell their child, 
you know, to, to be the one of authority. They need to, to respect the parent first, then come into the school and conduct themselves in an organized manner, as opposed to coming in sloppy, late, and, you know, bad behavior, bad, bad, uh, what you call it, hygiene and all that stuff that we can, <laughs> we could um, fix at home. There's certain things that you have to instill in your child. Discipline. Mm -hmm. Why have someone discipline your child? You be the disciplinary person so that they come in with confidence, collected, organized, you know, clean. And then, of course, a good listener. Because it doesn't mean they have to agree with everything, but they need to be able to come in and intellectually argue if they disagree. As opposed to, nah, man, I'm not into that talk. No, I disagree because can you can they can they um, intellectually disagree with their teacher? <laughs> can they do this? Mm -hmm. And this is where we we can call our children higher and say, yes, you can have an education. Yes, you can disagree, but you don't have to be a threatening force where it's like slamming doors and throwing books down and and all. No. You can say, you know what, I I I understand what you've said, but I disagree because A, B, C, and D. That's right. And the teacher will be floored. Well, but of course they but, they would inter and they would in, they would internalize this as as someone being um, uh, what is it, non-compliant. Yeah. But you've given your child the tools to to navigate a system that is trying to subject them to being um subservient yeah that's what we don't want but that's what you can instill in your child that they will not do and well, that's why it's very important to 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 focus on your child's education now before they get to that age where they're looked at as being rebellious no just because they disagree doesn't mean they're being rebellious they just disagree you know right well, you know, well, you know, I. We're gonna have to conclude. I think we've provided enough value, Jade. We've provided enough value. Yes. We've provided yeah. enough uh, food for thought, right? For for mm -hmm. for for the family to consider. Um, but I want to close with this. Now that you have your children in, at home and you are teaching them or you have a communal, right? A communal, a group of uh, mm -hmm. parents, uh, you know, perhaps grand aunts or, you mm -hmm. know, adults, family, the melanated family teaching their own kids. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. very, very happy about that. The last thing that we should consider, family, is how we help our kids because this is a new, this is a new way of doing of learning, right? It's a new way of learning. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and while we add it, let's also learn how to create in safe environments for our children to socialize, right? Mm -hmm. So that means yeah. it means that you have to now be um uh proactive on on, on how your your children go out because now they're gonna have some more time. They're gonna have a little bit more time to themselves, right? So mm -hmm. consider, yeah. consider the things that they are watching, consider the friends that they are hooking up with, right? Consider, and, and, I'm, and I mean this, even if they are five years old, okay? So now that you yourself now are, you have to be self-reflective on the type of other uh, of friends that you are bringing around your family, your children, uh, right? Because we have to consider that mm -hmm. as well. Because right now what the enemy mm -hmm. is doing, okay, they take it. Because they really are at war with our kids. That's that's what it is. They are at war with our women and they are at war with our kids. And they want to emasculate the men, okay, so that they can, they can remove them out of the picture so they can attack the woman and child because that's what the enemy does. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. he has to disrupt yeah. the family core. Okay, mm -hmm. now that we are reclaiming yeah. our power, our strength, we're reclaiming our children. It's very, very important, family, 
I think this is one of the, I think this is something that we should have spoken about earlier. I should have introduced that earlier in the conversation, but I wanted to just have a continuation. But um, hopefully people listen through till the end and get this point, because this is a very, very important point. Yes, you, yeah. you're taking possession of your child, but you have to reimagine the society that you want your child to grow in because that mm -hmm. society would would uh, has to foster um, security, peace, tranquility, right? So that they can, um, because education is from uh, is from within outward. Education is mm -hmm. not is not from outward inward. No, no, no. It's inward outward because mm -hmm. our children came prepared already. Nothing, nothing in this work can teach them. Remember, inventions, ideas, all these things came from within. That's okay? Right. Right? So we have to remember that. So it's very, very important, mm -hmm. family, that we create the type of the environments that we want so that we have to protect our kids because they will then go outward and produce and create the next invention, the next big thing, right? So you have to you know, consider that. You got something to add about that, Jay? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and just simply put, um, if you are a, a parent and you don't understand what we just said, not that you can't intellectualize it, think about this. Throughout the years, Blacks have been the ones to come up with dance, music. We are the inventors. You know, Google all the Black inventors and see what inventions that they've created. They are the scientists. We are the creators. Whereas the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy <laughs> is the one that wants to take the credit, mm -hmm. the one that steals the copyrights, the one who, who takes your patent and mass produces it in China and outpaces and sells you, and you can't afford to sue them. They're, the enemy capitalizes on our intellect. Mm -hmm. So keeping our children distracted broke, discouraged, also puts them in a state of numbness where they're not or not creating anything that builds them money. But if you keep them away from those distractions, and I'm going to be specific now, mm -hmm. the desire for Jordan, the desires for iPhones, and the desire for, for earbuds that are expensive, like Beats, um, headphones, and these expensive things where your money is being invested in their empire instead of your child's education and their future, then you have fallen into the trap of, of, of uh, this commercialism, commercialism in the schools, commercialism with products. So when you invest in your child's education, should you invest in, in an iPhone or should you get a computer so that your child can homeschool? Should you invest in a trip, like let's go, like let's say you want to go to the Grand Canyon as opposed to just looking at it from a website. Maybe your child is interested in learning about fossils. You can go to places where they actually have live explorations or, um, you know, hiking trails where mm -hmm. the kids are discovering things hands on. Mm -hmm. You invest in an experience that will build their future as opposed to collecting clutter in their room. We're generous parents that love giving gifts, but we have spent our money in the wrong places. So the thought of homeschooling is an investment of time and money, but thought of what are you actually building, invest in your child. Not mm -hmm. the products, not the t-shirts, not the, the games you're down they're downloading. No. And the time, how are they using their time? They, you, if you, if they, if you know what their interest is, like, let's say it was music, then the time should be spent in them composing, um, learning how to, to, to uh, use synthesizers, and edit music, mm -hmm. construct, and then the business aspect, protecting their rights as a musician, as mm -hmm. an artist, 
Mm -hmm. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars elsewhere when they can do it all there in their bath, in the bathroom, in their bedroom (laughs) or their basement. The wrong word came out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. The basement, their bedroom, their living room. Mm -hmm. And then that child can be a future musician that now can lease their music, Mm -hmm. being smart about the music as opposed to someone just taking their idea. No, they own it. They have a copyright. And Mm -hmm. now they can lease the music for a month or a year online. So being savvy with your investments will be the best way to navigate your child. If you're choosing to homeschool, we have to unschool. We have to look at everything from a distance and say, you know what? This is not working for our community. Let's figure out how to fan into flame my daughter or child's interest in a way that will pay them back when they are done with this education. Because at a young age, you can actually be navigating them in their career as opposed to hoping they'll get good grades, hoping that Harvard, Yale, Columbia, NYU will accept them, hoping their GPA is okay, hoping that their essay, their entrance, and their entrance entrance essay is Mm -hmm. acceptable. Woo, that was hard. Mm -hmm. Hoping that they'll like them, hoping that they'll be respected. No, yeah. they can start their career right now yeah. by you taking the time to cut those corners and say, you can learn it right here. You don't yeah. need a degree to learn how to edit music in your home. Yeah. That, and no, they no. can be very skilled at it. Yeah, let me finish your thought. Hoping that somebody will give them a recording contract. A job. Exactly. Or a job. The same thing, exactly, mm-hmm. a job. So, so yeah, in the process of them learning family, they also have to learn the business, all right? There's yes. got to be an aspect where they understand how to claim their works uh, and keep their works and, and not, not allow. See, see the, the enemy has always, always found a way to control the resources, and that is... He kept us poor so that we don't have to need them. I, I guess I said, that, I, I said that wrong. He kept us poor so we can need them. Okay? Mm-hmm. He kept us yeah. poor. He kept the resources away from us so that we can, we can, we can desire the, 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 the very resources that is free, is free. It should be free for us. But mm-hmm. it's a new day and now people are waking waking up Mm -hmm. um i want to say jay that we've given them enough today uh do you have any closing words yes um we are going to provide some links uh for homeschooling if this is your first time thinking about it uh we reside in the u.s and the east coast Uh, We understand that homeschooling is different in different states and countries. So we encourage you to do your own research, but we'll provide some basic links. If you have any questions in regards to this narrow cast of, you know, um, basics of how to get started or some advice, um, we can point you in the right direction, but we strongly encourage you to do your research because you know what your child's and the family's needs are. And there's lots of resources online because it's not this this uh, concept of homeschooling um, goes back for hundreds of years. It's not just because of the pandemic. People, mm-hmm. um, you know, most religious groups in the past have done it. People who are farmers that it just makes sense for the kids to learn because they have a business. They got They have a business to attend, and every it's all hands on deck. Mm-hmm. You know, kids that that work. In, that go to school that's less labor in the family business. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's it's literally um, on the job training that's right. in terms of economics. You know, supply and demand is right there because they have the resources. But we who are city people have to think outside of the box and you know what your child is like and what their interests are. And then you have to look, start Googling, start researching to see what is or what pods or, or circles that are in your area that you can link with and see how you can start building that community. But it starts with you analyzing where you're at and taking that step and saying, you know what, 
I do know what's best for my child. And it is a brave step, but it's emotionally, financially, and um, uh, I would almost say even spiritually, the most responsible choice you can ever make because you value your child. And your child is going to be so much more confident in themselves because they're in a school setting. When I say school, meaning in a home school setting where they're valued and loved, where the time is being understood and their interests are being um, monitored, but also inspired and encouraged to. And, and the children will explore without someone saying, they don't, you know, like discouraging them or, or you're not going to fail your child. Mm -hmm. So your this journey is something that you both will experience and it's a beautiful experience if you're willing to embrace it. So thank you so much for joining us in this narrow cast. We thank you for, for uh, liking and subscribing, please. As, as Silverback said, comment because it does help our ag algorithm and we want to grow our community too because we value our community and want our community to thrive. And we are a part of your community and we are thriving with you too. So thank you so much for joining us. And we hope that you will continue to enjoy our other narrow casts. Yes, family. Yes, yes, yes. Well, family, may this, uh, if this, again, if this, if this, information was valuable for you today family uh just make sure that uh you share the content with others and uh so that uh, they can get the same information yeah and uh we ask that uh that the father the creator and the mother god may they bless you May you be covered. Remember your neighbors. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Let us build our communities. Let us love one another. Okay? Because we don't have anyone else but ourselves. So, may Baba Mungu bless you. Have an incredible day wherever you are, whether it's night or, or morning. Be blessed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.